Hey guys, it's Nana back again with the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 11 episode 12. So let's get right into it, shall we? So we are uh, we start off where Portia and Candy left off last week with the, in the fight and Portia saying, I'm not a victim, bitch. <laughs> Who would have thought? And then Portia, and I keep wondering, asking one question. Why does Candy have to go back to saying, don't ask me for no favors? This is like the second time she said it. And I, I've said, uh, it kind of makes her come out like, oh, you only help. I don't know. It's kind of funny. You know, I just, I mean, I know Candy is a well-known figure and people know her, but she keeps throwing that out. And in my mind, I think if you're doing someone a favor it's not something that you need to let people, other people know you know i think she was instrumental when portia had issues in her career earlier on yeah i think she was in the uh, mother's love the play that candy had which was kind of nice but i don't think she needs to keep throwing it out there okay moving right along oh oh yeah congratulations to candy too on being on big brother that is booked and busy yeah take a hint so Marlo agrees that Mandy could have asked Portia, that Candy could have asked Portia, you know, what happened, which is my thoughts. I was like, oh, it wouldn't have hurt. Even if you didn't believe her, you could at least have said, hey, okay, what happened? For all it's worth. And then heard her gibber for 15, 20 minutes and be like, okay, well, that's not what I heard. And, you know, if you are really working on mending the friendship, I think Marlo was right on that. Then Tanya, this is the ladies in the kimonos, and which was really cool. And they hope to get them to tell them that really the essence of this whole dinner wasn't to sort of resolve Candy and Portia's issue, but actually to tell invite them to Tokyo for the girls' trip. So the kimonos are really, really hot. And then they go back to the Hibachi table and they have a, a chef or two catering to them. Now that is real. I would like to get to that, you know, where you can actually have a nice hibachi table in the house and just have friends over. I thought that was really cool. Shamari gets to eating her foods. Mm-hmm. Heifer be gone. And once she couldn't use the chopsticks, she tried the spoon. The spoon didn't work. The soup spoon. Girl, you could just have asked for a spoon. <laughs> so that was funny. And Tanya apologizes to Nini again about the comment of uh, the high and the lows. Who knows whether she was trying to shade Nini. But I think at the end of the day, uh, she's actually giving Nini's boutique swag more time. I mean, who would have remembered the name? I mean, who would have mentioned it if she, Tanya didn't mention it? You know, so, and then Nini goes back and forth and saying, oh, yeah, apology accepted, but, and then, I just think it was just not necessary, Nini. I, that's in my opinion. It is what it is. Like, if she mentioned, she's giving you some, some, you know, brand recognition. So, that's kind of good. So, take it for all, what it is. So, then, we have Portia coming for Eva. And saying Eva was also shady and shading Miss Cynthia. Eva, you were shady. So own it. Just own it. Yeah, I was shady and it was just a shady moment. Yeah, you did call Cynthia the mother, remember? And it's okay, you know, but you just have to own it. But Portia, you're being messy too. It was just so not necessary. Yeah. And Eva tells the ladies about the Tokyo trip and they're very excited. And then, um... We move on to Greg and Nini. I can't, I can't with this because it's, it's too much. Do you guys know why we love tuning into Real Housewives and Kardashians and all this other stuff? It's because we do not want to think about reality. Yeah, give us the stuff, but, you know, yeah, tell us, okay, yeah, we need to go and get checked. But, Greg, we wish you well. We thank God you're getting better. You know, so we see Greg anyways. I'm just going to briefly go over this. We see Greg talking to, to Nini and, you know, he's now trying to get healthy. Ugh. 
I just can't even do this. He's trying to eat healthy and Nini's like, oh yeah, he's taking a scare to get you to eat healthy. So he's making the effort, but he's apparently he's kind of being grumpy and a grouch and Nini's like complaining. So his birthday is coming up in about two days time and they're having a party and then they have a vegan chef come over. But then Greg's upset because she's not a vegan chef, but she can make vegan food. Greg, really? Really? No. So then we're moving on. We move on right to uh, the sex. Oh, yeah, here we go. So now Candy is done with Portia. Do you swear, Candy, to really never mention Portia's name again? At least for till the end of the season. I, Candy. I, Candy. Swear, do so swear, never to mention Portia's name again. Never to mention Portia's name again. On this I live and stand. So Candy says she's never, she's done with Portia, she's not even going to invite her for lunch. And I would be happy, honestly, if she never mentions Portia's name again and finds another storyline, I will be ecstatic about that because I'm literally done with that, with Portia being Candy's storyline. Come on. Look for something else. And then now we see Cynthia and Mike Hill. And Mike is answering questions with the table with Marlo. Um, Candy. There's one other person. Whew. I think it was Eva. Yeah. So, well, if I can forget you, yeah, then you'll go. <laughs> Nana, don't be shady. Okay. So, yeah. So, they have the lunch with... Uh, the Hill guy, Cynthia's boyfriend, and he keeps on saying he is the Hill and not Will. I kind of like that though. And then Cynthia's like, you can ask him whatever, kind of, almost whatever. Uh, so Candy goes to asking him uh, what he would like to do if to get, you know, to get Cynthia up and running in 10 minutes. And he's like, oh, he likes to be rather make love than have sex. And that got me thinking. I know a lot of people say there is a difference between making love and having sex. There is, right? I don't know. Who cares? Okay, and then Marlo goes to asking some hard-hitting questions like, <laughs> Were you paid to be on a date with Cynthia? <sighs> yeah, pretty much. Is this a Kenya move? And Mike is like, uh-uh, I ain't no will. I'm here for the kill. And then she also asks when last he had an STD test. And I was like, oh, Marlo, that's too much. But good to know. Get tested. Be sure before you, you know, open it up. Moving on. Right along. We have Candy and Shamari. They're getting, Candy's having a dungeon party. She's trying to make some coins of the dungeon situation that happened a few seasons ago. So she's thinking, oh, she's going to do a little party and... I don't know how she's going to make money off it, unless she starts a, a lingerie line, maybe. That might that would be good, in line with her candy coated click and her sex toy line, you know. I think that it would just work. And then ladies are trying out lingerie, and of course, Shimari calls Ron. Shimari does look really good, you know. She looks really good. And then I must give it to Candy. Candy, you haven't looked better this season. You've looked really good and you got the body and that's really impressive. Well done. Kudos. Moving on. Portia goes to meet up with her, with her site, no, yeah, therapist. Yeah. And we haven't seen the therapist in a while. Apparently the same therapist she had when she was dating Cordell. And then she's talking about what, what's going on in the Kansas situation. And she's afraid of losing herself. And then they throw back to Cordell. <laughs> and you see the remarkable difference with someone that has a voice. With Portia that has found her voice. And Portia that was with Cordell. That was being controlled by Cordell. And I totally understand it. Because you, the difference is just really remarkable. You know? Because you're just like, oh wow. Uh, is it the same person or are there two different people, you know? That's kind of cool. So the, the, the therapist is saying, don't be scared to, you can be both. You can have, be happy 
and be partial and you don't have to lose yourself you know and if ever you're going too fast in the relationship pull back and i was thinking well it's a bit late for that now she's like what six seven months pregnant uh -huh. that ship sailed way back she could have pulled back and had this discussion before getting pregnant but i think she wanted to get pregnant so oh well good luck Portia. now we have dennis um he says oh he should Portia the text message and it wasn't really any big deal and that they had agreed to cut their exes but dennis apparently hadn't done it full circle and was still in the process i totally get that and i agree somewhat but I still believe that, hmm, what do I believe? I believe that if two people decide to, decide to go become exclusive, they can still have friends, you know? They can still be friends with their exes, you know? But it has to, you have to set your boundaries and make it clear that, hey, look, we are just friends. I'm seeing someone else. I'm in a, relation, a committed relationship. That's it. We're done. You know, I don't think you need to be on an island just because you're in a relationship, you know? That's just my thoughts though, but again, what do I know? <laughs> so yeah, so Dennis is saying, yeah, should have the test and pretty much just wants him to own and say, I did this, I shouldn't have done it. And yeah, then they go back to Greg's birthday party on the day of the event and the fam they have family and friend and we see Nini talking to her sister-in-law who is kind of happy that Nini is there supporting Greg and Nini is like, yeah, I'm doing my best, but I also need some from time to time for some other people, for people to hold me up. And I totally understand that it's not easy taking care of an invalid or someone who is going through that. And you also try to have to try and take care of yourself as well. So good job, Nini. Just keep it up, okay? Keep your head up too. So back to Porsche and Dennis. And yeah, so Dennis has apologized. Thank you, Dennis, for apologizing. Now, can we move on? It really wasn't that big a deal. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, so that's pretty much all that happened in this episode. There's one other thing I want to talk about before we before I shut it down. People, a lot of people have been talking about whether we should scrap the Real Housewives or whether there needs to be a change. Apparently, the ratings have dipped. And I totally understand that people wanting more. Um, they say Phaedra might come back or maybe Kenya might come back. I'm even hearing Apollo too might come back. Hmm. What do you guys think? Do we just need to revamp or does the whole show need to go? I kind of think a revamp probably will work better than scrapping the whole show, you know, and then maybe giving the new people a chance for them to get their feet firmly on the ground and then they can run. You know, that's just my thoughts. I want to hear what you think. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to comment down below. Thanks, Foxy Mama 365. See ya.